Welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. I'm Zach, and today I'm going to show you how to build this miter saw table for less than $150. Seriously, my old miter saw table was just a countertop and some stacked two by fours. That's why I built this. It's strong, easy to build, and best of all, costs less than $150. I think you guys are gonna really like this, and if you do, hit the like button. And while you're at it, the subscribe button too, because I've got more projects coming. Now, here's what we're gonna need for the job. For a project like this, I like to use 2x4s since it's an inexpensive wood, but they do have rounded edges so I like to run them through my planer to crisp them up. I moved on to cutting out all the individual frame pieces. It's pretty obvious why I need a miter saw table since I've got 4x4s propping up the ends of each board. This also required cutting a lot of similar lengths so a stop block would have made it go much faster instead of measuring each piece individually. My plans show all the dimensions as well as the most efficient way to cut out the 9 different lengths out of the 16 2x4s. The front legs are made up of one longer board attached to a short one forming a notch where the horizontal cross piece attaches. I do like a lot of glue, it'll run out the sides but it's an easy cleanup. Make sure to flush up the bottoms and clamp everything together. I pre-drill holes and use 3 inch deck screws to make sure it's not going anywhere. The back legs are similar to the front legs except there is a notch at the top and bottom. You'll want to make sure to use two cut off pieces as spacers to position the shorter board. And I still like glue. Pay attention to which side I'm putting the screws in. This way the screws will all go in on the back side and won't be visible from the front. So I'm using the pocket hole screws to connect the leg assemblies. You don't need to do this, but it's actually a stronger connection method than screwing into the end of the board since it goes across the wood grain. I'm using the Craig pocket hole jig, which I really like because it makes these pocket holes really fast and easy. I have a link in the description if you want to check it out. After the holes are drilled in the cross pieces, it's time to attach them to the verticals. As you'll see later in the video, there are two versions of the leg assemblies. The difference is the placement of the cross piece. And by the way, I have inexpensive plans available for this project. They have all the dimensions and step-by-step -step assembly instructions to go along with this video. That link is also in the description.
This is the longer left side table. You can see how the cross pieces I attached are on the outside of the table base assembly. There are three notches for the horizontal cross pieces. I left the bottom front open for storage reasons, as you'll see later. Corners are glued and then screws are put in from the back. I should mention I've designed this table to be about 3 inches higher than a normal countertop height since I am 6 foot 4, but you can always shorten these legs if you want to bring down the overall height. Make sure you spend your time to square everything up both vertically and horizontally. It'll pay off later, I promise. This is also where I found out how uneven my shop floor is. Finished the left side of the table. I left this big opening so I can fit in this chest. So we're gonna see how it fits. Like a dream! I spaced the supports evenly across the length of the table. I added glue and then screwed them in place with pocket screws. This really keeps the look of the front board nice and clean. I won't show the assembly, but I built the right hand table which is identical except it's slightly shorter in length. I designed the center saw platform as a separate piece in case I get a different saw someday. This will make it easy to create a platform to fit a new saw. I decided to go with black melanine as a surface for two reasons. One, and most importantly, it looks cool. And two, the surface is kind of slick so it's easier to slide when I'm cutting into place. You want to make sure you have a clean edge on the black. And I found I was getting some chipping from the circular saw, so I ended up cutting the top out using my router. Two passes with a straight bit gave me a beautiful clean edge. First cut to the right depth, and then trim to the proper width. The melamine has a particle board center. This doesn't give the edge I want, so I'm adding some poplar trim to give it a more finished look. I ripped the trim down to 3 quarters inch, then glued and brad nailed it into place.
I butted up the ends and used a flush cut pull saw to cut off the excess. I laid down one inch painter's tape on the edges as a spacer, then pre-drilled the holes every six inches using a countersink drill bit. I really don't need this many screws, but I think it looks cool, so I did it. I wanted my screws to match the black melamine surface, so I decided to use two inch black sheetrock screws. I brought in my big buddy Marcus for some extra muscle to help move the two tables into place. I snugged up the soft platform in between the two tables and used four clamps to temporarily hold the platform in place and make minor leveling adjustments. Once the saw base was in position, I used eight screws to lock the platform in. I cut two melamine fence boards to length for each side. This is my first time using the saw on the new table, and I gotta say, it's pretty nice. Using extra pieces of 2x4, I cut seven 45 degree triangles to be braces for the fences. I glued up the two lengths of melamine along with the braces, tacked everything together, then finished by countersinking the screws flush with the surface. I fine-tuned the level of the saw base with some washers and screwed it into place. Using an 8-foot straight edge, I positioned the fences in line with the saw, marked the positions with tape, and clamped them into place. I drilled one quarter inch pilot holes, then drilled larger holes in the tabletop for the threaded insert.
Also, make sure to offset the holes from the fence far enough to allow for space for the knob to spin. I'm using 1 quarter inch 20 by 15 millimeter threaded wood inserts. I cranked in the threaded inserts making sure to use a fair amount of glue on the threads to help strengthen the particle board. You want to make sure that these threaded inserts are snug, but if you torque them down too hard they will tear out of the board. I ran a 1 quarter inch bolt from below in all the inserts. I'm using hardware from the PowerTech T-Track knob kit, also linked below, which will make it easy for me to remove the fences if I need more work surface. Finally, I dropped the fences in and tightened down the knobs. As you can see I installed a Rockler T-Track to use as an easy bench stop, but if you're tight on a budget it's really easy to use a square piece of 2x4 and clamp it to the fence and it will work perfectly as a stop. With that, this miter saw table is done. If you're interested, I do have another short video that shows how I installed this T-Track into the table. I have a link in the description. The new miter saw table works great and I've really enjoyed having it in the shop so far. And hey, if this video helped you in any way, hit the like button. Also, I am brand new to YouTube and I'm still trying to figure things out, so I'd really like to hear from you down in the comments about how I'm doing. And remember, hit the subscribe button because I've got lots more projects coming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.